Welcome back. This has to be the busiest Monday since I started the channel. Like, Mondays used to be the day with no games, one game, maybe two. And I remember growing up, Monday was the day, eh, there's no hockey tonight. Uh, tonight there was a lot, including six that started at four o'clock my time. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to start off talking about Anaheim and the New York Rangers. So scoring was up again tonight. A lot of goals scored in these games tonight. Uh, this one no different, even though it's Gibson versus Shesterkin, two of the bigger name goaltenders, and yet we had a lot of goals. Uh, early jump for the Rangers. Uh, Jones then had a chance on a turnover. That was saved. Uh, there's a delay game call. The Rangers go to the power play, and they score on it. It is Trocek from Zibanejad and Panarin at 734. So the Rangers power play is still lethal, and they go back to it. And when they go back to it, they score again. It is Zibanejad from Trocek and Panarin at 13-10. So these guys off to a very good start to the season. Kreider not necessary on the power play at this point, and a great pass by Trocek, and then Zibanejad buries it. McTavish then had a rush chance that was defended, but Anaheim does fight back. It's Vitrano from Regenda and uh, Lundestrom at 15-48. The Ducks then get a power play. Ryan Strom's denied. That power play is killed off. However, Early in the second period, the Ducks tie it. It is Zegras from Terry and Kulikov at 134. That's a goal scored on the rush. Suddenly it's 2-2. Uh, and the shots are 3-0 for Anaheim six and a half minutes into the period. So really they're playing quite well. But then at 9.52, it is Kako from Zibanejad and Fox that puts the Rangers back into the lead. Uh, the Rangers press with seven and a half minutes left. They also get a power play. Kreider was denied at the net. After the power play is done at 17.39, Lafreniere gets his first of the year from Hedl and Truba. So the kid line strikes there, the kid line with a goal here as well. And then in the final minute, Panarin scores from Fox and Lindgren at 19.26. So three goals in that period after Anaheim had tied it. I mean, it's not tied any longer. We're going to the third period. The shots are only 1-0 for the Rangers at three and a half minutes. You can see they were in lockdown. But Comtois would score the third goal of the game for Anaheim from Shattenkirk and Terry at 5.33. The Rangers did press for an answer. Truba then breaks up a two-on-one. Uh, we get a power play for the Rangers, and surprise, surprise, they score on it. It is Zibanejad on the power play from Panarin and Fox at 11.42. Uh, and then before the game's over, Anaheim does score. It's Grant from Jones and Regenda at 16.14. So Regenda with a couple of assists. Your final score is six to four for the Rangers. They go to three and one in the season. The Ducks drop to one and two. Uh, the shots sixteen to nine Rangers in the first, eighteen to five Rangers in the second, nine to eight Rangers in the third. Final shots forty three to twenty two for the Rangers. It was a dominant performance and back to back games where Anaheim's kind of wooled around by a New York based team. Uh, power plays the Anaheim Ducks zero for one. The Rangers three for four. So there's that lethal power play. Hits were 27-17 for the Rangers. Gibson saved 29 out of 34. And this is two games now where Gibson doesn't finish. Stolarz saves 8 out of 9 in relief. Shesterkin saves 18 out of 22. Didn't have his best game. Didn't need to. They win 6-4. to four. So this is one difference early in the season with the Rangers game is that they didn't need Shesterkin to save the world and put the team on his back. They won the game with a lot of goals and their special teams, again, really stellar. So we'll see if that continues. All right, next up. Uh, so I, I did put a trap magnet on Arizona against Toronto, and early in this game I saw why. Uh, it's Vimelka versus Shalgren in this one. Uh, early Leafs power play, that was unsuccessful. Uh, really, and they had a really hard time generating shots on their power play as well. Uh, the Coyotes then get a power play. The good news, if you're a Toronto fan, if there is any, is that that power play gets killed off, doesn't get any shots. The power play for Arizona early had its problems. Uh, Leafs press at six minutes. Hall has a shot that's blocked. The Coyotes rush. Uh, Fisher had a net feed that was blocked. We end up with two minutes of four on four shortly after that. Uh, Mayo has a shot that's held as the Coyotes press. With 326 left, the Leafs go to the power play. Uh, Matthews whiffed on one from the slot. Uh, it's killed off, and then the Coyotes get a power play. And in the final minute of the period, and these can be killers, it's Richie, the former Toronto Maple Leaf, from Gostas Bear and Mosier at 1934. That's the same scoring play they had twice in their first game of the year. So I'm, I'm starting to have this muscle memory about writing out those names all in a row. 
Uh, th so the second period, the early edges for the Coyotes. So this is where you want Toronto to come out and really show that killer instinct. And I, I just didn't see that tonight. Uh, Giordano then had a rush chance that was held. The shots are three apiece at four and a half minutes. So now Arizona's keeping up with them. Uh, Gunther had a blast that was saved. And then Fisher, he scores from Bukestad at 8.32. It is two to nothing for the Coyotes. Then there's a delay game call. The Coyotes get a power play after that. Uh, that's killed off. Muzzin exits the game at this point. Muzzin would not return. So if you're not panicked about the blue line for the Leafs, coming out of tonight, you may be panicked about the blue line for the Leafs. The Leafs get a power play, but then after that's done, there's too many Leafs on the ice, and Arizona gets their fourth power play. So that gets killed off, but we go into the third. This is where they announce Muzzin will not return. There's an early press by the Coyotes. The Leafs press back at three and a half minutes. We then had a power play for Toronto. It's killed off. No shots for Toronto on that power play. Remember, they're down 2 0. It's the third period. The Boo Birds were out in Toronto tonight. And I, I get it. I totally get it. So uh, they're, the Leafs press. They can't get to the net. However, they get another power play. And they do score on that. Nylander breaks the goose egg from Tavares and Riley at 1254. That is point number 900 for John Tavares. Maybe a, maybe a video on that. Sure. Uh, and then Marner scores a little bit after that to tie the game at 13-18. And this is where the Leafs are like, okay, we've got the momentum, and they press for the lead. And I thought, at that point, I thought, okay, the Leafs are going to get out of this. They've woken up now. They're not going to lose this game. 2.05 left, though. Uh, the Coyotes get a power play, and they score on it. The Coyotes' power play has been good through three games. We'll see if it stays that way. It's Gostas Bear from Keller at 18-27. So the Leafs pull the goalie, and they did score. It was Kerfoot's goal, but it's challenged, and it comes back. Um, Marner was visibly frustrated in the final minute of this game. Uh, frustrated, I think, with his own play, probably with the way the game was going. And an empty net goal was scored by Lawson Kraus, the assist to Fisher at 19 minutes and 50 seconds, and that is the game. So the final score is 4-2 to two for the Arizona Coyotes, who go to 1-2 and two on the season. For Toronto, they drop to 2-2. Two and two. Uh, The shots are 5-4 Toronto in the first, 9-8 Arizona in the second, 15-6 Toronto in the third. Final shots, 28-19 uh, for the Leafs. Power plays, Arizona goes 2-5, for five, Toronto 1-5. for five. Uh, Hits were 25-23 for Toronto. Vimelka, 26 saves on 28 shots. Shalgren saves 15 out of 18. So, yeah, this was this was a game that Toronto really... And I, I really think these are important games, even early in the season. You want to get some momentum going. You see that other teams have momentum. They're putting up some points, and they're getting distance on you. You want to make up, up for that. So, anyways, we'll see whether or not they do. Uh, obviously, it's really early in the season. They lost at home against Arizona last year as well. So, it's just a tradition at this point, I guess. Next up, Boston. So my preseason predictions and all that early on looking like they're going to be wrong about Boston. I'm not upset about being wrong about Boston at this point. I don't know how sustainable it is, but this was an impressive game. So it's Bobrovsky versus Olmark, and it takes 21 seconds for Boston to get on the board, and it's DeBrusque. So DeBrusque gets the goal there. Bruins then had a power play. Uh, Riley misses wide as the power play comes to an end. The shots are 5-1 to one for Boston five minutes into this. So they came out and they, they really put the hammer down. Uh, Lomberg then has a chance that's held. The Panthers get a power play. It becomes a 5-on-3. Ekblad has a blast that's saved. Boston survives that. They kill it off. And it, it really was the Linus Olmark show to this point. Like, he was fantastic in this game. Panthers had some momentum, but the Bruins would press with three and a half minutes left. With 108 left, the Bruins get a power play. Pasternak has a tip that was held. Uh, and so we, through one period, have Boston up 1-0. I'm kind of bewildered as much as anybody else. But second period, Panthers finish the kill of that power play from the end of the first. And then Bennett at 432 scores to tie the game from Kachuk and Balsers. Uh, Balsers has been driving some play in Florida. He hasn't been rewarded on the score sheet until this. Uh, Kachuk with the assist. It was a nice goal by Bennett as well. Uh, the Bruins then press, but they're not getting shots at this point in the game. Uh, things get a little bit scrummy after a no-check penalty. It was a it was a, a bit of a rough hit uh, for no-check. There were some hits tonight that may result in uh, Department of Player Safety getting involved tomorrow. I'm not saying the no-check one is, but it's possible. 
Uh, so instead of that, because of the scrumminess that happens after that, it's offsetting penalties, which made Florida go nuts. Uh, th those players were not happy. And you know what? I understand it. You see a player get taken down in the corner with what you think is a dirty hit. You retaliate for it, and suddenly it's four on four. It's tough. Um, so Bergeron scores from DeBrusque at 12.35. Uh, that puts Boston back into the lead. It's a fast break goal, too. Uh, the Panthers get a power play that's killed off because Olmark's fantastic. So through two periods, it's 2-1 to one for Boston. But of course, last year, Florida was an excellent third period team. Would that continue this year? That's uh, a little bit of a different story tonight. Early rush by the Bruins in the third. They end up getting a power play. Uh, Pasternak with a net feed. That wouldn't go. And then he ends up scoring from Bergeron and Clifton at 7 one Hall was then denied on a 2-1-1. -on so Boston with some momentum. And then at 12.31, with a nice wraparound, where was that, Trent Frederick? You scored from Greer and Clifton. So at 12.31, uh, that makes it a 4-1 to lead for Boston. However, it is Florida. They do come back. Forsling with his first of the year from White and Lusterinen at 12.58. So Colin White continues to produce. Uh, and then the Panthers get a power play. It becomes a 6-on-4. Um, and Lindholm ends up hitting the post uh, on what would have been an empty net goal. However, uh, White would score from Forsling and Verhege at 18-23 to make it a bit of a close game, 4-3. DeBrusque takes all the tension out of it at 18-57 with an empty net marker and his second goal of the game. Boston wins 5-3. They go to 3-0 in the season. Florida drops to 2-1 with the loss. The shots 12-11 Boston in the first, 10-9 Florida in the second, 20-13 Florida in the third. Final shots were 41-34 for the Panthers. Florida goes 0 for 5 on the power play. Boston 0 for 3. The hits were 22 to 18 for Florida. Bobrovsky saves 29 out of 33. Olmark saves 38 out of 41. Excellent night for Olmark. And uh, yeah, so Boston, uh, a pretty big win tonight. And again, early in the season, but big win. Next up, Montreal. How about those Habs, right? Um, a, a, a phrase that was uttered a lot in my house by my father when I was growing up. How about those Habs? And tonight, yeah, I could kind of hear it. Uh, so it's the Smith versus Montembeau. Uh, the, the, the Penguins thought they scored early, but the review says, nope, puck stayed out. It hit the post, and it shows it did. It hit the inside of the post, so I understand why they might have thought they scored there. Shots are 2-1 to one for Montreal at four and a half minutes. Montreal came out, and they played quite well from the opening whistle. Um, again, as a rush chance defended, the Habs press at six and a half minutes. Caulfield's denied on a turnover. Dodonov couldn't bury in a rush. It is scoreless after one period. Second period, Gooley has a rush chance that saved. The Habs are doubling the Penguins in shots at this point. Uh, there's a press by the Habs at two and a half minutes, but Pittsburgh scores first. At 3.52, it's Malkin from Pedersen and Rust. That was scored on a turnover in the Montreal end. Uh, it was the seventh shot of the game for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Montreal had 14. So that's one of those ones that can really deflate a team. Uh, then there's a power play for the Penguins. They don't score on it, but shortly after it's done, Malkin would score from Rust and Joseph at 7.55. So Malkin with a couple of goals, Rust with a couple of helpers. Uh, then the Habs press with eight and a half minutes left. So again, Montreal didn't give up at any point in this game. Uh, near miss by Crosby in close. He normally buries those ones right next to the net. 3.06 left, the Penguins get a power play. Montreal kills that off, and they get a power play that straddles the second and third period. So there's one minute left in the Montreal power play. Hoffman has a blast that's held. There's some pushing after that. Uh, Penguins did finish the kill, but right after it's done, at a minute and 10 seconds, Suzuki from Gooley and Hoffman. Suzuki buries his own rebound, and there you go. Uh, Montreal is on the board. Crosby's then denied as the Penguins press. They're trying to get that two-goal lead back. Uh, the shots, well, the fans called one. The ref didn't, so the fans get kind of upset with that. I did not hear a ref, you suck chant tonight, but knowing there were nine games on, it's possible I missed one. Uh, shots are four to three for the Habs at eight minutes, so again, they're playing well. Uh, 9.35 left, Penguins get a power play. Uh, there's a shorthanded Monaghan shot that was saved, so good shorthanded play by Montreal. Uh, the Habs then get a power play of their own. It's killed off, but the Habs press. Slavkovsky was really close to getting his first NHL goal tonight. He was in close. He just could not get that puck away from DeSmith. Uh, DeSmith then holds with 2.26 left, and there's a timeout called. Whatever that was discussed in Montreal's timeout works. Caulfield scores from Drew and Gooley at 17.40, and we're headed to overtime. Overtime has not been very common in the NHL so far this year. 
Uh, the Habs control. They draw themselves a power play. Doc has a shot that deflects wide, and then his next opportunity is in the back of the net. At three minutes and nine seconds, he scores from Monaghan and Suzuki. So with the infamous four-on-three overtime power play, they score, they win it. Montreal evens the record at 2-2. Two two. They're now tied with Toronto. And for Pittsburgh, they're 2-0-1 oh with the loss in Montreal. The shots in this one favored Montreal throughout most of it. 11-6 in the first. Pittsburgh outshoots them 15-13 in the second. Montreal outshoots them 11-6 in the third and 4-1 in overtime. Final shots, 39-28 for Montreal. So Pittsburgh, a bit of a down game for them. Montreal, though, played very well. Power plays, Pittsburgh 0 for 3, Montreal 1 for 3. The hits were 17 or 19 to 17 for Montreal. The Smith saves 36 out of 39. Montembeau, pretty good night. 26 saves on 28 shots, and considering how close together the two Melkin goals are, he was pretty well, he bookended those goals really well. So, not bad. I mean, as soon as you see Montembeau in the net, you get a little nervous if you're a Montreal fan, right? Not tonight, you didn't. All right, next up. Last one on this board is Vancouver against Washington. Is Vancouver in trouble? Of course they are. Did I chuckle? Maybe. So, before the season started, and I did a video on arguing for all 32 teams on how they could win the Stanley Cup this year, I giggled when I got to Vancouver. It's games like tonight that are the reason that I laughed. It's it's the reason that I, that I initially, as a kid, started cheering for more than one team, was because Vancouver was too much disappointment and honestly, if I was just a Vancouver fan, I might not be here with this channel as it is right now. Uh, Demko versus Kemper in this one. Uh, Besser goes into the box early, and I just put, oh boy, and for good reason. Uh, Washington scores at 55 seconds. Start on time. And it's Ovechkin on the power play from Johansson and Strom. And here we go. Uh, Demko knocked it in himself too, so really charitable by Demko there. Uh, pushing after a Kemper hold. Pedersen then had a rush chance that was saved. Pedersen, probably the best Canuck tonight. I know he was in the three stars, but it, it feels like faint praise when you're off to a start like this. Shots are 5-3, to three, Vancouver at 8 minutes. There was a post for Besser. He was unhappy. While you saw some Leaf frustration in this game, I saw some from the Canucks as well. They're getting very frustrated. Again, it's early in the season, but it feels like things could really snowball from here. Remember, the Canucks play again tomorrow. Um, so... A near miss for Mantha as the Caps press. Uh, Eller has a rush chance that's held. And then Pedersen with eight seconds left because a puck bounces over Kemper's stick. Kemper, and I agree with the announcers, Kemper should have gloved it. He didn't. Uh, and so it's Pedersen from Hughes and Ekman Larson at 19.52 that ties the game. A little bit of good luck. However, that good luck does not extend into the second period. At eight seconds, well, Washington gets the lead back. It's Eller from Favari. So eight seconds before the end of the period, Vancouver ties it. Eight seconds after the start of the next period, Washington says, and I will take that lead back. Uh, Horvat nearly answers. The Canucks press are kept to the outside. Uh, Sherry is denied as the Caps press, but then the Canucks get a couple of goals here. First, it's Horvat from Pearson and Besser at 8.03. And then 11 seconds later, it's Lazar from Kuzmenko at 8.14. Then Pud Colson had a wraparound opportunity, and that was held. So it feels like, all right, maybe maybe this is it. Maybe they allow the first goal, now they're head 3-2. In fact, the shots are 14-7 to for Vancouver with seven minutes left. They were playing quite well. They get a power play, and they score on it. It's JT Miller from Hughes and Pedersen at 17-34. That's their only power play of the game. So they go to the third period up 4-2. to two. Can turn the game off. It's probably done. They're up by two. They're going to the third. Not these Canucks. These Canucks are all about blowing leads and, and two goals, three goals, whatever you got. They'll shoot themselves in the foot so here we go third period Cavs get a power play and they score on it and again it's an early goal all three periods early goals uh this time it's strom from carlson and johansson at 116 uh connor brown gets shaken up goes to the bench uh we had it with two minutes of four on four taking place mantha has a rush chance that save and the turnovers are showing up for vancouver in the third what has been the bane of their existence through two games and now three uh, Carlson from Ovechkin and Kuznetsov at 8.43. The shots are 6-1 to one for Washington halfway through the period. Uh, the Canucks press. Uh, they're a post away from the lead. And then at 12.44, it's Sherry. Sherry's off to a hot start to the season. He scores from Ovechkin and Kuznetsov. Uh, the Caps press. And Ovi scores. And it was challenged for offside. Watching it in real time, I, I didn't see much there. Turns out it counts. 
So Ovechkin with the goal from Kuznetsov and Jensen at 17.02, which means, yeah, delay a game penalty. And that basically does it. A 6-4 win for Washington at home. They go to 2-2 two and two on the season. Vancouver 0-3. I'm glad I used the skate magnet for this one and the skate logos for the goals because it feels like 80s night when the Canucks blow a 4-2 lead in the third. Uh, shots, 7 apiece in the first. 19-13 Vancouver in the second. 10-4 Washington in the third. Final shots, 30 apiece. Once that that train starts rolling the other way, the Canucks don't know how to stop it and get it going the right way again. Uh, power plays, Vancouver 1-1. One for one, Washington 2-3, for three, so penalty kills a problem too. Uh, hits. 37 to 34 Washington. Demko saves 24 out of 30. So what have you got? Vancouver struggling with it. Uh, Kemper saves 26 out of 30 in the victory. And now I need to change boards. All right. So um, LA and the Detroit Red Wings. The Kings had a, a tough couple of games to start the season. They've turned things around. Now, I, I don't think that Todd McClellan's going to be happy with the defensive goaltending side of things, but at least the results are there over the last couple of games. So it's quick versus who so Edler got hurt in warm-ups. So we're seeing teams playing with less than a full lineup. We're seeing a lot of injuries. And of course, with the salary cap, it's making things interesting. Uh, no shots until Kopitar gets one at 259. So it was a slow defensive start. It didn't stay that way. Ernie, on the first Detroit shot, it goes in the back of the net. It's uh, scored from Suter and Mata uh, at 426. And it's on a two-on-one. So hey, it's a good start. Nope. Um, LA ties it. At 4.45, it's Velarde from Ayafalo and Doughty, and that one went in off Cider. So it's just, it's one of those ones that goes in off the skate. But hey, for Velarde, he's off to a very good start to the season. I am a fan. I've mentioned this before. Uh, the shots are three apiece at eight minutes. Just for Gabe Velarde, he went through years of back problems. It is nice to see him in the NHL and producing after all those back problems. Kings get a power play. There's a shorthanded two-on-one, and Ernie's shot was kicked aside. It looked like Ernie was going to do it again on a two-on-one. Uh, it's killed off, but the Wings, uh, they are 100% on the penalty kill thus far this season. That did maintain that number throughout this game, so they're still 100%. Uh, Kempe would end up scoring, though, from Kopitar and Fiala at 1440. So that makes it 2-1 to one LA. Then Huso holds onto a puck. There's some pushing after that. Uh, the Wings had a power play with 10 seconds left in the period, with Brendan Lemieux going to the box. So second period, they kill it off. Lemieux out of the box, almost had a break. Really close to a break and might have got the goal if not. Soderblom then had a net drive that draws a power play. And if you need to see how strong and big this guy is, just look up that footage. He's just willing it and good luck stopping him. We are going to see Soderblom dra basically draw a lot of power plays for Detroit this year. He's just so big and powerful that as a defenseman, you kind of have to commit a penalty to slow him down. Uh, Dano has a shorthanded rush that's saved. They do kill that off, but Detroit does get a goal. It's Perron, who's looked good in a Detroit jersey, from Kubalik and Mata at 9.15. Mata has been on the board a bunch early in the year, too. Uh, Kings press with eight minutes left. They end up getting themselves a power play. Uh, they don't score on that, but Dano would put them back into the lead from Moore and Dursey at 16.18. So Philippe Dano continuing to play well as a king. Uh, late Kings power play, but it comes a four on four, rolls over into the third period. Detroit ends up with the power play. That's everything's killed off there. The Wings press at three minutes. The shots are three to one for LA, six minutes into the period. The Kings get a power play, it becomes four on four for 11 seconds. Then Detroit has the power play, they score on theirs. It's Perron with his second goal of the game from Peronic and Lundquist at 11 14. So, uh, Detroit's back in this, but Kopitar would score at 13-16 from Kempe and Fiala. So this was another game that was just goals after goals after goals. The Wings pressed with three and a half minutes left, and eventually in the final minute, they do score. It's Sunquist from Perron and Kubalik at 19-19. There's Perron again, two goals and an assist, and that ties the game at four, and we go into overtime. Kings controlled early. Uh, the Wings would get a shot, the puck's turned over, and Dano ends up scoring from Moore at 112. And it went in off Philip, Philip Hronik. Uh, it was a two-on-one as well, and uh, just a tough break for Hronik. So LA wins this one 5-4 in overtime. They're now 2-2 two two on the season. For Detroit, they're 2-0-1 oh on the season. Uh, shots are 11 apiece in the first, 12-10 Detroit in the second, 14-9 LA in the third. Both teams had a shot in overtime. LA's was the one that matters. 
Final shots, 36 to 33 LA. Power plays the Kings 0 for 4. Detroit 1 for 4. The hits, 29 to 13 for Detroit. They're physical. Uh, Quick saves 29 out of 33. Not tremendous stats, but they win. Huso saves 31 out of 36. So, yeah, this is, this is the season that we're having in the NHL. Which brings us to Minnesota and Colorado. Okay, if, if you want to know when a good time is to panic, uh, I'll be doing a panic index this week, it looks like. Because <laughs> we've got some teams that may very well have some, some panic um, levels that are a little higher than we expected. In Minnesota, I, I think there's concern with the goaltending. So it's Georgiev versus Gustafsson. Fast start, good back and forth to this. The shots are three to one for the Avs at two and a half minutes though. Uh, the Avs press at three minutes, Gustafsson holds, but uh, Myers with a goal at 3.30. Gustafsson didn't see it. Uh, Johnson and Gerard with the assists on that one. Uh, however, Minnesota answers quickly. It's Kaprizov from Addison and Jost at 4.14, and then the wild press for the lead. The shots are five to four for the Avs at eight minutes. The Avs press at the half, but they're kept to the outside by Minnesota. Uh, the Wild Press was seven minutes left, but then there's a turnover. And Gerard puts it in the net at 15.08. And that was one that I thought that's where they need to save from Gustafson. One thing Minnesota hasn't had in any of their three games is a really big key save at a big moment in the game from one of their goalies. And at some point soon, it's going to become a major concern. Second period. Byram couldn't, buy, couldn't bury one. And then his next rush opportunity... That was saved. We get a power play for the Wild, and they score on it. It's Erickson Eck from Addison and Boldy at 6.09. So Addison with a couple of helpers. Boldy's on the board, and the score's tied at 2. The shots are tied at 8.5 minutes, 6 apiece. Abs get a power play. There was a shorthanded rush by Hartman that helped to end it. We get 2 minutes of 4-on-4. Four four. During that 4-on-4, four four, Colorado scores. It's Rantanen from McKinnon and McCarr at 11.59. So Rantanen finally gets that first goal of the year, uh, three games into the season. The Wild then get a power play. That's killed off. But Colorado with a 3-2 lead entering the third period. Uh, early press by the Wild. But then where does Manson, where did this Manson net drive come from? It was a beautiful goal at 2-0-2 from Cogliano and Comfer. And yeah, Manson with a net drive that you would, if you watch that and you weren't familiar, you'd be like, he's a good offensive defenseman, right? Not, not usually, no. Um, but yeah, so Wild get a power play. Kaprizov's denied. And then his next opportunity, he's not. He scores the second goal of the game from Addison, so that's his third assist. Uh, Zuccarello with the other assist at 4-17. So that makes it close. Went in off Taves, but they all count. Uh, Abs try to answer. There's a delayed penalty, but during... Okay, so this is where if you're a Wild fan and you're frustrated, I feel it. Because I was frustrated with the Wild on this play too. It's, it's a 4-on-4. Four four. There's a delayed penalty, right? So you're... You, you've got to make sure that you've got five guys on the ice. They had six. So when the goalie comes off, two guys jump on the ice, it's six. You're only allowed to have five because it was four on four. And so that delayed power play becomes four on four. So it, it didn't didn't do him any good. And that's, that's them shooting themselves in the foot there. Then there's some pushing after a hold by Gustafson. Uh, Kaprizov got shaken up, which had to scare uh, fans of the Wild there with 548 left. The Avs get a power play. Hartman, he rushes in. He has a wide open net. Can he hit it? No, he ran out of he ran out of room and so goes across the crease harmlessly. Puck goes the other way. McKinnon scores on the power play from Makar and Nachushkin at 1454. He tipped it in front. There was some discussion about whether or not he hit it with a high stick. It wasn't reviewed. It wasn't challenged, which tells me it wasn't touched with a high stick. Or at the very least, they didn't think it was clear. It has to be clear to overturn it. So, yeah, um, they pulled the goaltender with three minutes left. With 116 left, it's, it's a six on four because you've, you've got to do something. Well, Nachushkin hits the empty net. It's also a shorthanded goal at 1939. So Colorado wins this one 6-3. to three. They go to 2-1 and one on the season. Minnesota 0-3 oh on the year. And they've allowed a lot of goals. It's what, 20 goals in three games? That's not great. Um, even by 80 standards, that'd be pretty bad. Uh, the shots 11 to 10 Minnesota in the first, 18 16 Colorado in the second, 12 to 10 Minnesota in the third. Final shots 39 to 38 for Minnesota. Power plays one for two for Colorado, two for four for Minnesota. Hits 23 to 20 for Colorado. Georgiev saved 36 out of 39. Gustafson saved 32 out of 37. Again, I, I really think that goaltending. Is, is the glaring issue right now with Minnesota. Not saying that the defense has been great either. 
But yeah, I don't know how long this can go before a change has to take place. All right, next up, Winnipeg in against the Dallas Stars. Uh, for Dallas, a uh, pretty, pretty good start for them so far. Uh, the, the interesting thing is, in my season predictions, the only team that I cheer for that I predicted to make the playoffs would be Vancouver. <laughs> Why do I laugh when I say Vancouver? Anyways, uh, it's Hellebuck versus Ottinger in this one. You laugh because you have to. So it's a, there's a close call at two minutes, but the Stars cleared out. Uh, and then Shifley would score to put Winnipeg ahead from Connor and Morrissey at 328. And that was their fourth shot of the game. The Dallas Stars had one. Dallas did not start on time tonight. Uh, fans call a penalty. Ref didn't. Uh, Stars press, but they're kept to the outside. The Jets had a good first period going to this point. Jets press at seven and a half minutes. Their, their puck ends up deflecting out. Pavelski was denied as the Stars did press back and got some momentum going. Barron's denied in close. The Jets press, but then on a good forecheck, Delandry gets a puck, puts it to Sagan at 10.20. So Sagan, and I'm wearing a, a Sagan jersey here, um, it's a good opportunity to wear Sagan, right? Because he gets a goal for Dallas. Boston wins. No problem. So Sagan ties it up. Good four check at 10-20. And the momentum was there for Dallas after they tie it. Uh, there's a near miss for Delandria, who had one of his best games as a star tonight. Jets press with five and a half minutes left. The Stars get a power play. That's killed off. After one period, it is one apiece. Second period. Jets get a power play. There was a shorthanded rush chance for Hints. That saved. They did kill that off. Uh, the Stars had a 3-on-2 that misfired. The shots are 5-3 to three for Winnipeg at the half. So Winnipeg with a decent first half there. Uh, Dubois denied. The Jets go to the power play. A near miss by Dubois. It's killed off. That near miss by Dubois is as close as they got to having a shot. There were no shots on that power play. The Stars get a power play. Robinson or Robertson couldn't bury it. And then there's some shoving after that. A good cycle. Power play's killed off. Three shots. But not long after the kill's over... Hawkenpaw with his first of the year from Suter at 1538 puts Dallas ahead. The Jets would press with three and a half minutes left, but the puck goes the other way. And eventually, Kivi Ranta, who had fanned on an earlier opportunity, he scores from Lindell at 1728. Uh, it was a cross ice pass and in. No chance for Hellebuck on that one. It's three to one Dallas after two. Third period. Early press by the Stars and near miss by Rope Hints. Uh, shots are five or shots are one apiece at five minutes. So Dallas doing a good job of locking them out. Uh, they were playing a one two two. So that's one four checker, two guys in center ice, and the two defensemen back. It is really hard to get through a solid one two two, especially when you're down three to one, and it's Dallas that's defending that. So uh, power play for Dallas. They had eight seconds of a five on three. They called a timeout before the five on three. Uh, they don't score during that eight seconds of five on three, but they score during the five on four, and it's Haskinen. From Hintz and Robertson at 8 minutes and 12 seconds. And that kind of puts it out of reach. Um, there's a 4-minute Jets power play that comes up after that. So double minor against Dallas. Uh, aggressive penalty kill though. Connor has a shot that's saved. It's killed off. And after that power play, we're down to 6 minutes left in the game. Uh, the Jets go back to the power play. There was a goal line chance for Shifley. It does not cross the goal line. It curls its way out. Uh, and then it's held by Ottinger. And it's killed off, and your final score is four to one for Dallas. They go to three and zero on the season. Winnipeg drops to one and one. The shots in this one nine to eight Dallas in the first, 11-6 Dallas in the second, which is remarkable since the shots were five to three Winnipeg at the half. Uh, then the shots are ten nine Winnipeg in the third. Final shots twenty nine to twenty four for Dallas, who did a really good job of limiting Winnipeg's chances. Winnipeg zero for five on the power play. Dallas one for four. The hits thirteen to twelve for Winnipeg in this one. Hellebuck saves uh, 25 out of 28 shots. Um, this is wrong because it says 25 out of 24. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, no, that's not right. Uh, that would have been out of 29. Yeah, 25 out of 29. And then Ottinger saves 23 out of 24. He didn't have a safe percentage above 100 and still lose because that's not, or over 1,000, I guess. It's not, not possible. I'll just write the 29. This is going to drive me nuts if I don't. But you see, I was writing the 24 for Ottinger, and I wrote the 24 for Hellebuck, and that would be wrong. So I'll go ahead and fix it. Even though there's a lot of people watching on their phones, they're like, I, I can't read it anyways. I know. I know. The board's always been for, for me, but it's it's fun to have it up during the reviews, too. A lot of throwback logos tonight. All right, Carolina in against Seattle. No throwback logos here. I thought about it, and I thought, well, that would be a Whalers logo, and I, I want to save that until the reverse retro nights. So it was Anderson versus Grubauer. 
and we were hoping for a better year for Grubauer. The early returns are not encouraging. Uh, good Canes forecheck early. They had a three on one. That's fired wide. And then Jarvis. He scores from Shea and Ajo at 335. Seth Jarvis could be in for a big year uh, as he almost added another one on his next shift. Uh, Seattle gets a power play. The Canes don't let him set up. The Canes penalty kill looks as advertised from last season. Uh, so there's a shorthanded two-on-one, a near miss for Tara Vinen there, or else it could have been a shorthanded goal. Uh, so they killed that off. No shots allowed on that penalty kill. Um, Ajo with a fast break chance. That was held. The shots are 8-2 to two for the Canes at 8 minutes, so not like Grubauer had a lot of help out there either. The ice was definitely tilted at this point in favor of Carolina. Power play number 2 for the Kraken. Uh, it's better, but the Canes killed it off. I think there was one shot for Seattle on that power play. Grubauer steals a puck from Jarvis, which is good because Jarvis already had a goal. You don't want him getting another one. Borgen has a rush chance save. The Canes get a power play. Seattle did kill that off. And then there's a post for, for Jesper Fast. And then Grubauer holds on there. So it's one nothing Carolina after one. But you could see, like, Carolina could have been ahead by more. Second period. Early press by Seattle. Then there's a near miss for Kock and Yemi at the net. Uh, Seattle presses. And in this uh, this chances, they, they can't get to the net. They have their opportunities. just cannot get a shot on the net there. Uh, Natchez was robbed. Grubauer holds there. Eberle with a near miss from the slot. He looked skyward after that one. Not the only time Eberle looked skyward tonight that I saw. Sveshnikov has a rush chance that's denied, but the Canes end up going to a power play on that play. Aggressive penalty kill by Seattle. Did kill it off, but the Canes go back to the power play, and he can't keep giving them opportunities. Natchez was denied. The Kraken cleared out, but Ajo would score the power play marker from Svechnikov and Burns at 12-11. But Seattle gets a power play, and they do answer. It's Burakovsky from Eberle and McCann at 13:06 on the power play. So now it's okay. Do we have momentum? Uh, no because the Canes go back to a power play uh, and they score right away. So while Seattle's was scored within seconds of their power play being being called, so was Carolina's right after at 13.24. So 18 seconds later, Svechnikov scores from Ajo and Nason. So really the only way I could put was quick strike. It was just, it was fast, it was in the net. And then uh, about a minute later, Svechnikov from Natchez at 14.33. So Svechnikov had himself a game in the second period with two goals and an assist. Uh, the Kraken then had a power play that was killed off with 119 left. The Canes get a power play, and with them being up 4-1, to one, I, I knew where this game was headed. So third period, Ajo has a shot saved. Seattle did finish off the kill. Uh, Tara Vinen has a rush chance that's saved. They press. Uh, Wright then had a rush chance that was saved. Probably Wright's best chance in his uh, early career uh, to get a goal. Uh, then Dunn and Bjorkstrand are denied, but we're down to 13-21 left. Schwartz has a shot that's saved on a two-on-one. Uh, the Kraken pressed at the half. And Eddie Olchik, bless Eddie Olchik. Uh, really, they're down 4-1. Uh, they're getting opportunities, but so is Carolina. He kept saying, you know, if Seattle can just get one here, if they can just, if they can get one, they got a chance. And I, I, I'm all about the hope. Uh, JT Brown jumped in on that too. But Carolina wasn't wasn't blowing a three goal lead in the second half of a third period. Uh, shots are ten to seven for Seattle with six minutes left. They would even up. Uh, Martinuk ends up scoring from Slavin and Nason at fourteen forty one, and Martinuk just buried that one. Nice goal for the guy who cleared waivers a week ago. Uh, Geeky was then denied on a rush with one forty seven left to crack and get a power play, but they're behind by four. So. Carolina kills that off. They go to 3-0 with the 5-1 victory. Seattle, it was a good run while it lasted, right? 1-0-1 to start the season, and then Vegas and Carolina give them a reality check. And so now they're 1-2-1 with the 5-1 loss. The shots in this one favored Carolina in the first 11-6, 11-5 in the second. Both teams had 12 shots in the third. The final shot's 34-23 for Carolina. Power plays, the Canes 2-5, for five, Seattle 1-5. One for five. Hits, 18 hits each. Anderson had a good game. Wasn't overly busy for a lot of this, though. 22 saves on 23 shots. Grubauer, 29 saves on 34 shots. Seattle has started looking like last year's Seattle, which is a problem because last year's Seattle had 60 points. They have to get more this year, right? Again, as Carolina, they are a contender. They may very well end up winning the Stanley Cup. They don't win it tonight, 
But uh, they, they won the game, and they have a perfect record. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.